Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to a brand new video. Today we are filming a book haul, but only for the month of January, because in January of 2023, I bought more than 50 books. <sighs> and um, I'm pretty horrified with myself, I'm not gonna lie to you, like, that's disgusting. Last year I was really good at my book buying, I mean, you wouldn't think so, but in the last six months of the year I only did one book haul, I barely bought any books, and I think I was too busy in the Christmas mood and buying books that I went a bit went a bit overboard. Every time I saw a bargain, I just had to buy it. I've got this new saying where I like bargain. And I walk around the stores going like bargain when there's a full price book. It's not a bargain, Brooke. It's not. I have my coffee here to try and make me feel better. It's not working. I also have a handful of books from Connor and Jade, I think, solely that we did like a lot of books at Christmas but some of them were really heavy to ship so when we were seeing each other for our holiday our annual holiday to Centre Parks in January anyway we simply said let's just trade them then so I have a couple of books to show you from Jade and Connor as well but the rest of them I bought and I need help should we start with the gifted books so that I can you know at least feel somewhat better about myself that I didn't buy them the first book is from Jade and that is the Wick This Wicked Fate by Kaylin Bayron. This is the second book to This Poison Heart. Yes. Um, which I really, really enjoyed, surprisingly. I didn't think I would because it's like a YA story, but I was so hooked by that novel that I was really excited to have the sequel. And I bought that book in Jade's bookshop that she works at. So it was really nice that this book also came from that bookshop. I love that bookshop so much. So yeah, this one's really short. So yeah, I'm really excited to find out what happens at the end of the story and yeah, go back to Briseis because I absolutely loved her. Jade also picked me up a book I've never heard of and that is Necropolis by Bethan Evans. So the author of this came to Jade's store and Jade was like reading it and thought that sounded very much my cup of tea, which to be honest, it does. And it's all about like, women um, dealing with oppression from men and society in general. That does sound very, very me. And just so Jade got it signed to me, which I just think is so sweet. So that was like such a beautiful gift. Thank you so much, Jade. Ugh. So kind. Um, also from Jade, we're doing like a book swap where we try and buy a book that the other person hasn't got or, you know, probably wouldn't buy, but would suit their personality. Now, Jade was on it. Jade was on it. She bought it straight away. I haven't even done mine. I've been researching and I cannot find a book that I think was perfect for Jade yet. That I'm determined to find one that she hasn't heard of. Um, determined, because she did for me. So it's taking me a bit of time. That was a tangent. But that's why I have this book. And it's Now She Is a Witch. Now She Is Witch by Kirsty Logan. Look at this cover. Look at this cover. I'm not going to tell you synopses because there's just too many books, but it does say you must stay away from the North Witches, my mother says. What we do isn't the same as what those witches do. Oh, beautiful. And just the like blurbs on the back from people are just saying about how beautiful it's and unsettling it is and spooky, feminist. Mm. She dug her mother's grave in the poison garden so it would stay hidden. This is so me. Like the cover with the mushrooms and I... have you seen a book more me? As soon as my library books are done, because my hold is coming up swift and fast with those, this is the priority because it sounds incredible. Oh, and one more book from Jade. I have, as you might know, the two fairy loot, Cruel Prince and the Wicked King books that I managed to get my hands on. But I never got my hands on Queen of Nothing and I've never been able to get my hands on Queen of Nothing without spending about £300 on the trilogy, which I'm not doing because I got both of those books for £45. Um, <laughs> Jay did it. Jay did it. She found the Wicked King fairy loot edition to complete my collection. There is, there, there is no words. <clears throat> It literally makes me tear up every time I think about this because this is the most thoughtful gift. I just, I don't know what to say about this. Like it's just so kind, so thoughtful and so beautiful. 
so yeah i have a complete collection now on my cruel prince shelf i even have the cruel prince bookends that i managed to find and i'm just so happy i just love this shelf so much it just brings me so much joy and i love the cruel prince and i love jade thank you so much thank you so much we have some lovely books from the corner first of all he brought on earth we're briefly gorgeous by ocean wong because he read this book and absolutely hated it i think he gave it a one star i'm pretty sure um, but I've been wanting to read this book for a really long time, so he was like, yeah, well, I certainly will not be keeping this. So he brought it for me, so thank you so much. I'm really happy about that. While he was here, again, I cannot believe I have this in my hands. God Killer by Hannah Kane. This was in my 23... This was in my top anticipated releases for 2023. I'm so excited to own it. Look how stunning. It's so short, but let me show you the best bit. <clears throat> This is the standard edition and those are the end pages. It's giving the Lord of the Rings. It's giving and I absolutely adore it. Haven't read it yet, but again, it is a priority. I eye this book up. Every night I lie in bed and I'm looking at this book like I want to read you so bad right now. Who needs sleep? Honestly, so stunning. So thank you very much. And then the Christmas gift that I got from Connor that was definitely too heavy to ship in the mail was classic works from women writers. wow um wow it's the canterbury classics wow if you don't know me i absolutely love women i love feminist literature i love anything about women and so to have classic works from women writers it's giving i don't know what it's giving it's just giving oh stunning so this is like the perfect book for me and it's just a bunch of short stories from many this many writers um, and a lot of them I'm really excited about, like the yellow wallpaper and the mysterious affair at Styles. I'm so excited for so many of these. And I feel like I'm just going to read one every now and again and just maybe one a month or something. That would be so beautiful. But not only are these gilded edges, they're like glittering. Like as you talk, you can't see this. But in real person, they're like actually glittering, not just gilded absolutely gorgeous edition and it now sits there facing outwards because that cover i mean the spine's beautiful too but the cover is giving i absolutely love this thank you so much this is beautiful and such an honor to own honestly beautiful okay first of all i bought the drift by cj tudor i do already own an arc of this and no i did not read it but it's a signed copy and i own all cj tudor books signed except for a sliver in the darkness which i don't own at all so i need to get my hands on and so while i saw it even though i haven't read it and i don't know if i like it yet i was like mm, what if i miss out on the chance what if i can't find it so i picked it up and it's like me and cj tudor's signature are like best friends now like I just know that's in off the back of my hand. Wow, look at those end pages. Oof. I think this is gonna be amazing. I follow CJ Tudor on Twitter. And so I've seen a lot of people, like I've seen her sharing a lot of people's reviews and everything in those people's reviews sounds very much up my alley. And I do love CJ Tudor's writing. It's a beautiful writing style while being very unsettling. Um, So I'm hoping that this is definitely gonna be at my cup of tea. I have read this bit which is like just before the book starts and this was already just such a beautiful paragraph or page that I'm really excited to read this I mean I, I feel like that one was justified what if I couldn't find a signed copy again then I've been in some charity shops this month and it's been a bit of a problem I picked up The Haunting Season now this is like a collection of short stories by various authors none of which I've liked books from before I think every person I read from on this I've not enjoyed which doesn't bode well for me but I've owned this on audible for like two years or maybe maybe it was just a year maybe I'm just lying maybe it was a year um because they did a two for one sale so I was already buying a book so I needed a free book and I picked that one and I meant to read it in spooky season and I forgot so I'm gonna read it in spooky season this year and because this was 50p for the hardback I kind of thought the likelihood of you loving it enough to own it is minimal but considering it's 50p, do you want to pass up this opportunity? No. Am I justified? I, I don't I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think I am, but mm, I don't know. Then me and Jade went book shopping and I was eyeing up 
the Satsuma complex by Mar Bob Mortimer um, in the War Warstones because it was half price. Um, I do not know this man. I know he's a very famous comedian. I don't watch comedians. I don't know who this man is. Never heard of him. Um, but I then decided not to. And then I walked into the charity shop and this was a pound. And I was like, ah, oh, I'm going to buy it then. All right, I'm going to buy it. But then I opened it and there's like blood on one of the pages. Oh, you can't really see it. But there's like blood here. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I want that in my house anymore. So I'm a little a bit frightened of that to be honest i picked up i picked up so many classics this month it's actually embarrassing oh um i picked up animal farm by george orwell because i have never read this i've never read a george orwell so i may as well talk about them both together i also picked up 1984 these are like matching little paperbacks i haven't got a paperback to show you the thing they're like matching little paperbacks they're so small they're obviously mass market and they're gorgeous animal farm is super short I think it's about like someone forgets to feed the animals and so they like riot or something. But I know that this is Kira's favourite book so I really want to read this because I want to know what Kira loves about it. And also I have no idea what 1984 is about and I've read the synopsis when I was buying it. I could not make heads or tails of this synopsis. I couldn't, I couldn't understand a word. So the thing that actually made me buy it was at the bottom. It says 1984 is George Orwell's terrifying vision of a totalitarian, that's a hard word to say, future in which everything and everyone is slave to a tyrannical regime. That made me buy it, even though I didn't understand a word that was said, so I'm probably not going to understand this whole book. I bought them anyway. They were three, no, they were 2 99 each. Bargain. No, stop saying bargain as a justification for buying books. Also, two ninety nine bargain. Stop it. Was a room of one's own and three guineas by Virginia Woolf. I've never read a Virginia Woolf, so I don't know. But it says, I think it's, I think it's an essay collection. I think I don't know for sure. Or maybe I think they're two separate stories. I, I re, I really don't know. I'll be completely honest. I have no idea. But I've never read a Virginia Woolf. But I'm trying my absolute best to read every woman classic writer, honestly, at this point, because they're so beautiful. And I really want to read this, even though I absolutely despise the cover. I mean, I get it. Like, when you look up close, it's cool. It's like books with the sun on it. But overall, it just looks like a black cover. I don't know. But anyway, two ninety nine bargain. Then I picked up She and Her Cat by Makoto Shinkai, because it was half price. Wait, did I buy this? Did I buy this in the Waterstone sale and I've already showed you? Or did I buy this later on because it was half price? Now, I might have shown you this already. In which case, this doesn't count. But I'll show it to you anyway, just in case. I absolutely love this book. I've read it. I've gave it five stars. So I'm really happy I own it. It's just a translated work about cats and their owners. And they're like short stories, but they interweave. And honestly... It was the most beautiful book ever. It made me cry. I absolutely loved it. But I think I've already talked about this book. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it down quickly. So you know how I said I bought a lot of classics this month? Well, I have shown you these in a vlog. Except I edited the entire vlog. Was exporting the vlog. And then it all went wrong. And it just cancelled. And everything deleted. Every, even the footage. So I couldn't redo it. So I'm really sorry you won't see that vlog. Because I spent two weeks filming it. But I bought so many of these vintage classic, what are they called? Penguin English Library Classics? And I did have them in, a, in an order, but then they fell on the floor, which was highly rude of them. I'm not even going to be able to lift these up. I don't know why I'm acting like I can. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Okay. Oh, bugger. Okay, so the reason I bought these was because in TK Maxx, they was having a sale. And said sale had these books for £2.50 each or £3 each. Like they were like some were £2.50, some were £3. I've just bent all the covers. Oh my God. And I don't own any of these. And I was like, I want a collection of them. I want to be a classics girly, even though I'm not a classics girly. So here we are. I will show you them. We have A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. I love these smiles. 
And they look so good on my shelves. Middle March by George Eliot. Dubliners by James Joyce. Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. So now I own two Virginia Woolfs. Actually, three. Because I also have To the Lighthouse. These editions are beautiful. The Scarlet Pimpernel. Is that how you say that? I'm not sure. By Baroness Auxie. I had never heard of this. Call me uncultured if you like. Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. A lot of Charles Dickens popping up here, aren't they? Howard's End by E.M. Forster. Treasure Island and the Ebb Tide by Robert Louis Stevenson. Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. Villette by Charlotte Bronte. And I think this is my favourite cover of the bunch. And then finally, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. A lot of those classic editions there. Um, but I felt like it was such a good price. I feel like this was a really good time to build my collection. Um, I am going to read them. I'm planning on maybe reading one classic a month of the year. So I haven't read any in January, but 12 in the year. So I'll read like two one month. I feel like I need to do that because I want to become a classic girly, as I said. And to do that, I need to read, which is the bad part of it. But yeah, I'm going to get rid of them if I don't like them. So I'm sure by the end I'll have like a very small collection. But for now... They look beautiful on my shelves up there. Let's carry on with a couple more books that I found in TK Maxx that were one pound. One pound! Oh, except for this one. This one was four pound. This is The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Agawa, which I've been wanting to read since 2020. So three years. I accidentally damaged the cover and I'm really upset about it. This is stunning and I think it's going to be absolutely beautiful and I'm really, really excited about it. That's all I have to say about that. Now, the other two were a pound. So first of all, we have Bernard and the Cloth Monkey by Judith Bryan. I don't know what this is about. It says it's a shattering portrait of family, a rebellion against silence and a testament to the human capacity for survival. It sounds really interesting. It's something about two sisters who have lost their family and they don't get along or something and then they have to like try to rebuild their familial relationship the cover is freaking me out like the moth is really freaking me out i don't know it sounds good so i picked it up and then i got colson whitehead's zone one um because it's a zombie apocalypse story i think yeah post-apocalyptic stress disorder with a malfunctioning zombie removal Definitely sounds like my cup of tea, so I'm hoping this is going to be good. I've never read anything from this author before, so who knows. Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. What is this? This I've been wanting to read for absolute ages. Everybody talks about this and says it's, like, really, really scary. I don't know. It sounds really interesting. I actually really like this cover. I thought I hated it, and now I really like it. But this book is floppy. Wow. Wow. Anyway, um, I found it in the chat shop for a pound, and I've been wanting to read it, so I did pick it up and i'm really excited for that one actually i need to prioritize it soon we have the personal assistant by kimberly bell um i've just been trying recently to just buy books that i've never heard of before um because i feel like with booktube and booktok we can get like really wrapped up in what's trending and what other people are thinking and i just sometimes need a refresh from that so i picked this up because i know nothing about it it doesn't look like it's very popular and so i did Hopefully I'll read it soon. Same with Night Forgotten by Megan Joyce to Tozer. This is also published by Wattpad Books. I've never read a book published by Wattpad's publishing house. So I kind of just really wanted to. And so I picked it up. I don't know if it's going to be any good. We'll see. Then I picked up The Loop by Ben Oliver because Connor absolutely loved this book. And it's not something... I don't know. It sounds good. It's like stuck in a loop prison system. And I wouldn't really buy this, but it does, it was a pound because somebody had obviously sliced through it when opening the box. Um, and I'm fine with that for a pound. I thought that was quite funny, actually. So, and probably because I won't end up, I don't imagine I'll end up like keeping this book forever. I imagine like I'll read it and be like, oh, that was good and then give it to someone else. So I didn't really mind. I just picked it up. First up, we have What Be Lies Beyond the Veil by Harper L. Woods. Um, I saw this and was like, oh, I bet that's going to be like a YA story. So I didn't pick it up. And then I read that it was apparently quite steamy and it's like new adult. So I have picked it up. It is the first book in a series. So hopefully I love this. I really love the cover. The cover does give YA though. So you can see why I thought that. But I'm, 
I'm excited about this. It says, once we worshipped them as gods, then we died on their swords. Now we'll claim what's theirs. Interesting. I then picked up Twisted Games by Anna Huang because I read Twisted Love and absolutely adored it. So I have this book now and I'm very excited about reading it. I was going to read it straight away. This was the book that like, I think it was one of the first books that I read, I bought in January and I was like, I'm going to read it straight away. <sighs> And then I didn't because I bought a million other books and got overwhelmed. I have a serious problem. So like when I say I'm allowed to buy books, it means like if I really love this one and I want to buy the sequel, I can buy the sequel. But I have to read it straight away because I have I have too many books. It's, it's getting a bit much. So yeah, I bought Twisted Games. Then I bought Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. I've only ever read The Unhoneymooners by, the, by them and I loved it. Um, so hopefully I'll like this. Then we have The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox because it was a pound in the charity shop and even though I won't be reading this till next Christmas, could I complain for a pound? No, I picked it up. Are we noticing a theme? Then I bought Booked on a Feeling by JC Lee because I know nothing about it but it had booked and it had bookshelves on the cover. I need therapy everyone I need therapy but it does look like a really cute romance and it's also published by Headline Eternal and I would really like someone to correct me if I'm wrong but I always look for them in the works for sale because I'm pretty sure they publish smutty books I'm not like full-on smut you know like not Kindle Unlimited romance smut but they post like the deceiving what do you call them animated covers that are then dishy you know so correct me if I'm wrong because that's what I always look for. And we have Dream On by Angie Hockman and again I picked it up because Headline Eternal. It looks really cute. Did I read a synopsis? No. No I didn't. Yeah. Then I picked up The Unexpected Past of Miss Jane Austen by Ada Bright and Cass Grafton. This is the second book in the series. But I think I can read this as a standalone. Someone let me know if you know. But yeah, it's about Jane Austen who goes to present day Bath. And I thought that'd be pretty cool because I live fairly close to Bath. I mean, an hour and a half drive. Or an hour drive. But, you know, I've been there a few times. So I thought it was quite interesting. Picked it up. I mean, what kind of justification is that? I don't know. Then we have... Set on You and X's and O's by Amy Leah. So I talked about this book in my anticipated releases for the year video and yeah I just picked up the first book in the series so that I could read this one. I mean the colours are stunning so yeah and I mean this was £4.50 in Tesco and this was £3 in the works. I feel like I wasn't missing out on anything but I do need to prioritise getting to these soon because I'm really excited and I see a lot of people reading them and hyping them up right now so I need to. Then I picked up this trilogy by Sarah Dassey. I picked up The Marriage Game, The Singles Table and The Dating Plan. I feel like I hear a lot about this but this was the third book in the series. So I just picked up all of them because they were all in the two for the three for six. So I thought whole trilogy of six pounds I will take it and I did. I did take it. Then we have The Hookup Plan by Farah, Farah Roshan. Again it's published by Headline Eternal. If somebody tells me I'm wrong now and they don't do the steamy books, I'm unhauling all of them. I mean, this one's called The Hooker Plan. Like, this has to be steamy, correct? Because if I read a fade to black again, like the cheat sheet, I'm going to lose my mind. But this has a gorgeous cover. I'm obsessed with her dress and heels. The blue on the purple. Mm. Mm. Then we have How to Fake It in Hollywood by Ava Wilder. Guess what? Headline Eternal. I'm so easy to manipulate with my book choices. I'm actually so easy to manipulate. Sorry. The empathetic, sexy and utterly radiant book has my whole heart. I read that and that was all I needed to put it straight in my basket. The basket being everybody else's around me's arms because I don't carry my own books. Although I do think this is about famous people. I don't like books about famous people and even though I just said I don't like books about famous people I did pick up Scandalized by Ivy Owens which is quite evidently a famous person romance but Tessa Bailey and Rose Dannon blurbed it so oh my 
god like listening to myself i'm aware how much i need help and how much of an idiot i am with my book buying and i promise to be better from this point forward because it's actually gross but i have so many books now especially romances to keep me going for as long as i please then i have this one which i can't remember if i bought in december or january so i might have already showed it to you so i'm sorry if i have i usually write these down but i forgot to this month because there were so many but i bought maggie moves on by lucy score um because i have another book by lucy score so i may as well show them together things we never got over i know nothing about either of these books but i know that this one is very popular at the moment on everywhere and so i picked up this one before i picked up this one because it had a dog on it and it's by the same author but then i found this in tesco's for really cheap so i picked it up as well um so i really hope i like her writing style because i have two now this one sounds like really fun i think it's like bad boy go go um but it looks really big i don't know i'm excited though then from the charity shop i found this and again it's one i've never heard anything of but the cover is absolutely stunning and it's famous in a small town by emma mills again famous not sure about that but look at the cover and i know this is probably gonna be fade to black um i'm aware and it says like small but i love small towns i love small town romance what i really loved before i joined youtube like a month before i joined youtube i read is it the oyster catcher by joe thomas completely fade to black completely like one of those i call them mother romances like a mum romance i loved it i absolutely adored it and then youtube kind of just swayed me well away from that which is fine i appreciate the things i'm reading now but this gave me me in 2019 i would have died for this and so part of me just really wanted to go back to this person and be her you know so i did I, I did be her and i bought it almost at the end can you believe it i picked up but i've next picked up a book that i'm just so excited about that like i don't understand why i haven't read it yet and that is magnolia parks by jessa hastings look how big this book is it's huge but it's so perfectly floppy but there's like multiple sizings of these books so now i need to go find the bigger sizing of the rest of the series because if i get like mismatching sizes it's not for me now this cover it's like a love or a hate kind of thing and part of me hates it part of me loves it i'm really not convinced i thought this was a mystery when i first saw the cover popping up everywhere it's like a gossip girl romance kind of thing well since everyone says it's like gossip girl but it's a romance between a magnolia and bj and it's a really toxic romance apparently they just keep cheating on each other i read the first couple of pages and um it was definitely very toxic straight away it just sounds amazing though i think this is gonna be so my cup of tea and so i really cannot wait to read this i was gonna save it until i had the other books in the series but i'm trying not to do that anymore so i won't i will be mature and i will read the book first adult assembly required by abby waxman i don't know why i picked this up because i'm pretty sure this is not going to be smutty i'm pretty sure it's not going to be anything special but i have it now someone must have talked about this somebody must have talked about this for me to have seen it and said yeah that's the one i want because i'm not being funny a good housekeeping blurbed it and that is just not me but i own it now so i will read it then we have by any other name by lauren kate and this is set in new york and that's all i needed because i love new york i love the colors on this cover i love everything about it and it's super short it's literally 280 pages amazing then i bought all the lonely people by mike gale because this sounds so sad it's about her man whose daughter has moved to australia and so he she keeps ringing him and is like are you okay like do i need to come back and he's like no i've got loads of friends he basically creates a whole fake life when really he doesn't leave the house and so one day she tells him that she's coming back to visit and he needs to somehow f get his fake life to be his real life and i just watched a man called otto and i just read a man called ove or ove or Ove or whatever his name is um it's giving those vibes and i actually think that movie is one of my it's my favorite movie of all time now i think so i really 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 want to read this and see if it's anything like it's giving those vibes 
I think I'm just obsessed with stories of old men now. Like, how cute, how sweet. And then last, I picked up The Mismatch by Sarah Jaffrey. When I posted it on my story, a couple of people replied and said that this is a really good book. And so I'm glad I picked it up now. But yeah, I don't know anything about it. I did read the synopsis when I was in the store. I didn't just buy this one. I did read it, but I don't remember anything about it. And to be honest, now that I'm reading it, I don't know why I'd have picked this up. But I'm glad I did. So yeah, it's quite chunky as well. It's like 450 pages. Ew. That is all the books. It's all done, everybody. It's done. It's done. And in 40 minutes. I filmed this in 40 minutes. Who am I? Anyway. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm so sorry that I have contributed so much to consumerism. I won't be doing that this point forward. I will be. Not this bad anyway. Um, but yeah, let me know if you recommend or don't recommend any of the books in this haul. Let me know because I my TBR is now in the triple digits. It was under 50 by the end of December. What am I doing? Um, so yeah, let me know if there's anything I can get rid of. Okay. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.